thank you very much sir, for coming uh, to the uh, English Policy Dialogue. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure. In Delhi. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, I'll start off with the question, what does the English language mean to you as an individual and as a prof professional? Well, it means quite a lot because uh, uh, when we say world is getting globalized, uh, there has to be a common language. Uh, we have seen in our own industry that everybody understood machine language and you know we grew, but uh, I think as we start integrating the world, there needs to be something which connects us and helps us communicate, so English plays a big role. Uh, it's true for the industry and it's true for nations as well. Does uh, English come in the way uh of a nation like India where there is in immense uh, cultural and linguistic diversity? Yeah, it, it does come in some places. It will in the future because as India aspires to grow at 8 to 9 percent, integrates with the global economies, service industry would grow. And the moment you talk about service industry, it's about people interacting with people, right? And hence that communication, uh, a language would become important. And that's not only true for people who are in the organized sector, it's as true for people who are in tourism, it's people who are driving taxis, it's people who are guides, it's people in the hotels, right? So I think uh, it, it, it is required as globalization furthers. And if you look at the way uh, the markets are going to be evolved uh, around East now, right? And India and China are going to play a bigger role, uh, then I think it'll, it could become a, a hindrance if, if we didn't have uh, more people being able to communicate in English and understand English. Is there a risk there, Mr. Mittal, uh, in English uh, challenging the linguistic diversities uh, in India? Well, you know, it could in case we take the pendulum and swing it the other way around and, you know, say it's English and nothing else. Uh, I, I suppose uh, cultures have very deep roots and cultures only don't come through language, it's also through practice and, and values and systems that families bring in. But I think we need to take the uh, middle path where we, we're saying that uh, a lot of our cultures and values are imbibed in our languages, right, and we need to promote them as much as we need English as a necessity to be brought in. What do you think the role of English language should be in education in India? Well, there are two, two levels that we should operate this at. I, I think when it gets, uh, when you talk about education, one is literacy. And I think if you look at the pyramid today, right, I, I think we don't necessarily need literacy and English to come in there because we need to have people being able to read and write. And at least first thing they should do is read and write their mother tongue. So if you call that education, I would think it's more literacy. And then when you get into uh, higher education, uh, then I think the medium uh, has to be because if it's, it's higher education, including technical, how do you get all that translated? Because a lot of research that happened, it could happen anywhere else, it eventually gets translated into one single language called English. And hence that benefit uh, is required. So in some areas, right, I would think that medium of uh, uh, training and uh, education as English would be important. Are you then arguing for uh, the idea that uh, English should be taught as uh, or seen as a skill uh, in a country like India rather than a language with its own attendant baggage? Well, you know, uh, again, uh, the moment we start putting um, labels to it, then it becomes more difficult, right? So I think we should be looking at uh, English as a medium to communicate orally, verbally, and comprehension. Right now, you call it a skill. You want to call it a language. Uh, leave it where it is, and and I, I think it's important to to do that because uh, uh, many a times we've got into this debate of which is the first language, which is the second language. I'm not sure we need to put those labels. Um, now, coming back to your role as uh, as a captain of the Indian industry, uh, do you think uh, the role of education as a whole and within that framework the role of English language, uh, um, the role that English language plays within education. Uh, has it, we often hear this demand from the industry that you know uh, we are, that you're not getting enough employable graduates. Uh, do you see there's a problem there in India? I mean, are we really not producing enough employable graduates? Yeah, so when you talk about employability uh, and enough people, A, there are enough people, 
but I think it's the quality. And what determines quality, right? Are are several aspects of it, right? Uh, is there, is are they what they what they are being taught is what the industry needs. So it's a course question of course curriculum. And even if the course curriculum was good, do we have the right kind of teachers teaching it? And the third issue, which I think where English comes in, is how do you teach it and in what medium do you teach it? And hence, what the comprehension of what you teach is. So there is a course, there is a teacher, and there is the medium, right? And I think all the three need to be, to be worked at to get that employable graduate. Just attacking English, for example, uh, would not mean success. And no, no different from any other two uh, that I mentioned. So if you have the best course curriculum, but you didn't have the right teacher in the medium, mm. you'd still have a problem. There's often an argument uh, that makes the rounds that uh, the goal of education is not just employment. It's, it's uh, you know, education prepares one for life. Uh, but there's also this demand from the industry of uh, producing uh, what uh, a columnist not so long ago quite flippantly called plug and play employees. Uh, what is your stance on that? No, I, I think education plays a big role. Uh, and I, you know, it's about learnability, it's about analytical skills, uh, you know, it's about trainability. I think those are important things. And then there is this word called employability. So if I am a technical graduate and if I am a mechanical engineer, I must have enough skills besides the first three that I mentioned in my area of specialization. It's like having a doctor saying, you know, I've got everything else, but I don't understand medicine. So I think there is a mix of all the four. It's not just, so I quite don't agree with the plug and play. Uh, I, I think we are talking about an overround, all round uh, development of an individual, where if you made him in a plug and play, then I think you had a problem, right? But I think we need to have this whole thing about learnability, analytical skills, trainability, and employability. Uh, one final question, what uh, are your expectations out of uh, the English for Progress third policy dialogue? What kind of changes would you like to see? A, uh, I think that's a very good question. Uh, I think we should uh, address this in a more holistic manner and not just at a policy level and so on. And one of the things that scares me in most times is about how are we going to scale our programs, right? What mechanisms, how are we going to, are we going to tweak our current system or are we going to disrupt our current system? And I think given the scale of the issue, given the opportunity that exists, I think we need to disrupt the system. Leverage technology, not the traditional methods of reaching it. It's going to take us quite a while to get enough teachers. So can we use technology to replace that? It cannot replace fully, but can we can, we can some of that? With access coming out to 100,000 villages on broadband, can we leverage that? So I think the expectation would be, uh, while we address these issues, we find problems, they are, we ca I hope we can segment them and to make them into manageable small problems. Otherwise, we'll keep debating it even in the fourth round of our English uh, policy debate. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Somithal, uh, President of NASCOM in India.